It feels like just yesterday I was hyping up the Arizona Cardinals, calling them a Super Bowl contender in 2021. And right after calling them a Super Bowl contender, they started the year 7-0 and and at one point 10-2. and And while I got a good amount of backlash in the comments, it was looking like a very solid take until Kyler Murray's ankle injury pretty much ruined the team's momentum. This would become a theme sadly as even in 2020, the Cardinals started off 6-3 and and crumbled in the second half after Kyler Murray got hurt, this time with a shoulder injury. And I mean, yeah, that's part of the danger of selecting a 5'10", 207 pound quarterback to be the face of your franchise. I've been a big Kyler supporter in the past, but now with the bloated contract and injuries in three straight seasons, I can't say I'm fully on board like I used to be. When Kyler tore his ACL in mid-December last season, you knew right away that 2023 was going to be a disastrous season for the Arizona Cardinals. As of right now, Arizona has the lowest projected win total in 2023 at 4.5 half, which I really can't argue with. They moved on from the Kingsbury and Kime regime. The two had been there together since 2019 and Kime was there even longer. They hired former Eagles defensive coordinator Jonathan Gannon as their head coach and former Patriot and Titan executive Monty Osenfor as their GM. But you have to love the way they've approached things so far. The only issue I've seen with their offseason was asking for too much for DeAndre Hopkins in trades, seeking out a second round pick, and eventually having to cut him for nothing. But they didn't force the number three overall picked and traded back with the Texans getting their first round pick for next year, which is a great move given their timeline. They didn't want to miss out on Paris Johnson, so they traded up with him with the Lions and got their guy yet still walked away with the Texans' first and third round picks in 2024. Maneuvering through the draft can be difficult, but Osen Fort showed in his first draft he's very capable of doing so. It would have been easy to stay at three, take Paris Johnson, and call it a day, but why not get more assets and still get the player you want all along? It's a very big win for Arizona. If the Texans struggle in year one of the D'Amico Ryans and CJ Stroud era, which is definitely possible, the Cardinals may end up with two picks in the top five next year. So look, 2023 is not going to be a fun year for Cardinals fans in all likelihood. There won't be a reason to rush Kyler Murray back. They lost talent on defense. Their best offensive playmaker is now a free agent. But their outlook in the next two to three years is actually really exciting. They may be projected the worst record in the NFL, but that's great because Caleb Williams out of USC is expected to be the best quarterback prospect since Trevor Lawrence. It reminds me a lot of the Bears situation situation. You may end up with the first overall pick and have a choice between the quarterback already on the roster or drafting the number one guy. Chicago of course sided with Justin Fields and traded the number one overall pick to Carolina and got an absolute haul including DJ Moore. If picking first the Cardinals can choose between Caleb Williams and Kyler Murray, me personally I'd probably go with Williams to restart the clock on the franchise but then again trading Kyler's contract might be very tough as well. But for Kyler if he were to be traded next year there are bound to be some suit two years off an ACL tear, and still just 27 years old at that time. Either decision seems like a win-win for the organization, but tanking is always easier said than done. Could this Cardinals team surprise us next year? I mean, Colt McCoy hasn't been that bad as a Cardinal. He's kept them at 500 the past two years in the six games he started while Kyler was inactive, but once again, that's a different offense. Their skill position players, even minus Hopkins, are not terrible. James Conner and Keontae Ingram is an interesting tandem in the backfield. Marquise Brown is still the wide receiver one with Greg Dorch, Rondell Moore, and even rookie Michael Wilson who has a ton of upside if he stays healthy. Trey McBride enters year two at tight end and you still have Zach Ertz on the roster who may be a prime trade candidate at the deadline if he's playing well. Their offensive line doesn't seem horrible, assuming Paris Johnson fits nicely whether it's at guard or at tackle. Their center position scares me, but it can't be worse than Billy Price last year. Their defense could be something to keep an eye on, but not in a good way, but here's why. Remember Isaiah Simmons? He was supposed to be the next transcendent linebacker out of Clemson in 2020, but it hasn't really worked out that well so far. The 6'4", 240-pound linebacker ran a sub-4-4 at his combine, and reports say he's been working with the defensive backs in camp. He can and has played just about everywhere, but Jonathan Gannon probably has ideas up his sleeve for this physical freak on defense. And speaking of physical freaks, Zayvon Collins, their 2021 first-round pick, is also possibly getting his position moved from inside linebacker to edge. Remember Hassan Reddick in Arizona? I know Cardinals fans do. Reddick went from an inside linebacker's 
his first three years, and he was pretty good, but exploded for 12 and a half sacks in year four and six forced fumbles when they moved him to outside linebacker. He's had a tremendous career since that move. Not saying Zayvon Collins will be that exact thing or even play edge full time, but it's worth exploring that versatility. Buda Baker still remains alongside Jalen Thompson at safety, and Kazir White at linebacker, who played under Gannon in Philly last year, could be one of the more underrated signings of the offseason. You also need to keep an eye on BJ Ojolari, their second round draft pick who plays edge. He was one of the youngest players in this past draft and his older brother Aziz Ojolari had eight sacks as a rookie with the Giants. And in most scouts minds, BJ Ojolari is even better than his older brother. So yeah, 2023 may suck in the short term, but in terms of which teams have the brightest future if they play their cards right, no pun intended, I can see Arizona being in a tremendous spot in two to three years from now. A lot of that hinges on getting the number one overall pick in 2024, but if you believe in the odds, there's a good chance it happens. There's only a few things that really matter for them big picture wise in 2023. Number one, find out if Jonathan Gannon's the real deal. Number two, see if these young defenders like Collins and Simmons can blossom at their new positions. Number three, of course, hope you end up with the first overall pick. And number four, hope that Monty Osenfort can unload some of these veterans like Zach Ertz at the deadline for some draft picks. Winning should always be your priority, but not when you're the 2023 three Arizona Cardinals. Anyway, that'll do it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave in the comments if you think the Cardinals have a bright future or am I just overrating the entire situation. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed and I'll talk to you guys next time.